play anywhere in the world, and Berkey loves his golf. And uh, and we woke up at about five o'clock in the morning um, you know, to travel from Edinburgh up to St Andrews, and we looked out the window and it was pissing down exactly like this. And uh, anyway, we jumped in the car anyway. We got up there and uh, on the first hole, teed off. The conditions were like this. By the time we got to the first green, it was blue skies. We went the whole 18 holes in blue skies. We got to the 18th green, and it was pissing down again. So, I mean, we, we, it's one of the great things you do is go around the world and play, you know, do different things. And, uh, and, and you know, I love Scotland, love going there uh, to play, and I mean, that was just one of the nice things to get to do. Tell me, uh, apart from Scotland, Scotland's a great, Scotland is a great place. I asked James O'Connor before, best touring destination for you, mate? Uh, one of your favourites, actually, Berkey, um, Cape Town. Let's change that too. We're going to change that then. Um, <laughs> you get back there to see the kids at all? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I've been for a few minutes, that's all right. It's quick to go back to that microphone, wasn't it? Uh, tell me about tonight. We're looking at the conditions out here. You mentioned about Scotland and being out there. Is it going to be more of a contest now for the Scots against the Aussies tonight? I mean, is it going, or is it going to be hands down for the Wallabies? I'm not pretty interested to talk about your touring, actually. <laughs> 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 I, mean, I, think, I mean, it's one of the great levellers uh, in sport are conditions, and um, and I think, um, as I said earlier, this is like being in Edinburgh, it's like being in Glasgow. They'll feel really comfortable. For us, it's probably a little bit different. Um, yeah, we're probably pretty keen to throw the ball around. Now get the ball out to our uh, speedy wingers, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, because of the conditions, that's uh, unlikely to happen. So, uh, look, I think it's going to be a lot closer um, tonight than it would have been had it been dry conditions. And uh, unfortunately, I think you'll probably see a lot of kicking as well. It's going to be a big forward battle, and um, you know, I'm still pretty confident we'll win, but uh, it's going to be a lot closer than uh, had it been dry conditions. There's a couple of debutants uh, playing tonight, and, and, and one going to be a fullback trying to catch the high ball. I told the guys about my first test match when I dropped the ball clean, my first touch. What do you, what are your memories of, of when you played for Wallabies for the first time? Uh, actually, pretty uh, pertinent actually, Berkey, because it was at uh, it was in 2000 uh, at Twickenham uh, against England. I came off the bench and um, you know, was, I'd been on five week tour, 26 players on the tour, I was the only one not to have played a test. And then I got selected for the last game against England uh, in that game. and. Uh, well, I came on with about 20 minutes to go and uh, Berkey ran in, ran in from fullback just as I came on. I came on as a, at a scrum. And I thought, oh, how nice is this? Berkey's coming up to congratulate me. You know? we're, we're ahead, 19-17. Um, and I was thinking, how good is this? Berkey, what a great bloke, coming up to congratulate me. I'm shooting myself first test. And, uh, and he comes over, shakes his hands to all the cameras, think what a great bloke Berkey is. And he goes, oh, worry, well done, but just don't give away any fucking penalties. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it's all about leadership, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I promise you I didn't go to QYN and family. There's always a, a great goal, but rivalry between the forwards and the backs uh, that, that goes on. Uh, I do recall a guy, we played with a fellow called Gary Morgan. I, I did early days. We used to have a Julius Sumner Miller Award when we had our cap out. Remember Julius Sumner Miller was, you know, why is it so? And... Um, for the line-outs, for, for, are there any novices for rugby tonight? Um, you know, when, when, when the game's going to be out there tonight, there's line-outs and, and, and stuff, and there's certain calls that correlate to where the ball's going to go. Now, Garrick, we played in conditions like this a couple of years ago in 1996 uh, in New Zealand in Athletic Park, the old Athletic Park in Wellington. We got beaten 43-6 that day. I contributed six points, so I was OK. But... <laughs> <laughs> Garrick Morgan, we're playing a line-out. And we're at training, and, the, and the, the key number, the secret number, was the number 19. And so it was supposed to be catch the ball from the top of the line out, pass the ball down, and the backs get the timing. In this time, Garrick brought it down, fed it to the halfback, and we lost our timing. He said, Garrick, 19, he went, got it, got it, got it. Anyhow, the game turns around, and a, a day later, we made the same mistake. We went to our happy hour, and, and, and as I said, the Julius Summer Miller Award, and Ilsey put up his hands, and he said, I got one on Garrick. It's been the other day at training, we, we've been talking about the line out, number 19. And he said, yeah, he said, Gary said to me in, in, in quiet confidence, he said, mate, I've always struggled with the number 19. I said, what do you mean, mate? He goes, I've always struggled whether it's odd or even. <laughs> mate, it's a big call. He said, exactly right. <laughs> and then he led across to him in confidence. He said, mate, I've always struggled with the nine times table. So <laughs> that's what we've got to deal with tonight. Hey, who's going to be the standout tonight? Uh, look, I, I, I'd, like, I'd really like to see uh, Dave Dennis um, 
stand up tonight. Um, you know, he's really, really good guy. Uh, he, he's, he's worked really hard to get his opportunity to play for Australia. He's been on two uh, spring tours with the Wallabies. Tonight he gets his opportunity, and uh, yeah, I see his form at the Waratahs. And it's been a long time coming, and I think it, you know, I'd love to see Dave Dennis uh, perform really well. Uh, again, Barry Barnes is probably under a little bit of pressure, so it'd be nice to see him go out there and, and play well. Uh, you know, I guess I'm a little bit biased there because of the Waratah guys, but uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely excited for Dave Dennis to be playing his uh, first test, and uh, hopefully he does well. Tell me, how, how important is it to come up here, obviously, barring rain, how, how important is it to come up here to bring uh, a test match to Newcastle, to, to the, in effect, the country system? Well, I'm not sure if it is the first test in Newcastle, but I think it's great. And, and I also like the idea of, uh, of playing a game midweek, um, you know, Tuesday night test match and then back it up again on Saturday with another, another test match. The reality is when you go to training on a Tuesday, you're bashing each other anyway. So you may as well be bashing your opposition. So I, I think it's great. I think it's uh, spreads the game. Uh, we come up here in Newcastle. It's, uh, you know, guys love coming up here. We, we've played plenty of trial games up here. And uh, you know, it's a beautiful part of the world. And, uh, and I think it's great for, great for rugby union to bring a game up here. Phil was one of the best Tuesday Warriors going around, actually. He was, he was one of the guys that you steer clear of the training. Um, talking about that, who, who's the toughest bloke you played with and against? I mean... I was saying to the guys before, we see the weekend, or, or what is now a Tuesday night, how difficult it is to get there, and who's the toughest player? Oh, look, I think the back row, uh, in particular, I mean, you, you, you come across a lot of big blokes, you come across a lot of, a lot of tough guys. Um, you know, I, I had a special admiration, I think, for the South Africans. Uh, Cornet Krieger, uh, for those who know their rugby and know the South Africans, uh, former, former uh, Springbok captain, but he was just tough. Um, you know, he'd do anything to you on the field and then he'd finish the game, he'd come up and want to have a beer with you. And, and, and I still had the shits about what he'd done to me on the field. But, uh, I mean, he, he was just tough and, and a really nice guy. Um, you know, you talk about training before and, and toughness of training. Look, I, I think when you're a young bloke trying to get into the team, it's, you know, you're in a squad, the only way to get your opportunities is to, is to train hard on a Tuesday. And, uh, you know, he's seen a lot of good guys. Uh, come through and get their opportunity through training really well uh, during the week. So uh, that was my reason. It finally worked after five weeks, and then I got a hard time when I got on the field anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me a quick score prediction for tonight. Uh, look, I, I think it's going to be a pretty low-scoring game, but I still think we'll win. Uh, uh, Twenty-six, eighteen. I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be closer than what I would have predicted had it been a dry night. Um, you know, and the conditions good, but it's going to be a. Uh, Dare I say, it's going to be a bit of a shit fight out there, and um, you know, I think that uh, you know, it's important for the guys to stand up. Phil, all those gentlemen looking good in his suit and hat and scarf and enjoying the corporate arena.